What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Berk, aka Dansquake here, and it's finally time to play Final Fantasy VI. So, I have been on a journey through the Final Fantasy universe, going backwards in time in more recent years, and my travels have taken me to Final Fantasy VI, back to 1994. So before I get into it, um, I think it's worth listening to like these next few minutes because this is going to be a long series, so you might as well know a few things before before you head into it. This is a Final Fantasy that originally I didn't really have too much of a opinion about, and over time, the more people I've spoken to from the community, the more amazing things I've heard about this game. It's meant to be one of the best, one of the greatest entries in the series, and most people who I, whose opinion I trust on Final Fantasy, who've played through from like you know the first game all the way up until the most recent one, a lot of people hold this game in high regard. So I have high expectations for this one, despite how old it is. It's on a system that I never really played growing up. It's not really a style of game or like an era of game that I'm familiar with. But it's Final Fantasy and it's meant to be one of the greats. So for that reason, I'm definitely excited. Before we get into it, let me talk a little bit about uh, what you're going to see here in this series. I'll start by saying, of course, what you're seeing on the screen is Final Fantasy VI Advance. This is the Game Boy Advance version. In the build-up to this one, I was looking into what platform should I play it on, and the answer wasn't really totally clean-cut. Unfortunately, despite its greatness, Final Fantasy VI is one of these weird games that doesn't really have a definitive edition or a port that is going to be agreed upon by pretty much the entire community. It's never been properly remastered and ported for the modern age, unfortunately. It does exist on Steam, but they've messed up the visuals and that kind of thing. Pretty much every single platform that's available on has flaws. But the Game Boy Advance version, I'm told, is one of the best versions. Uh, it has additional content. It has two additional dungeons that weren't in the original game. And the only problem with the Game Boy Advance versions was the soundtrack was messed up and there was like a, a visual sort of filterish element that was a problem. But thankfully there's been patches released to fix those things. So what you're listening to is the patched and fixed soundtrack and hopefully whatever visual thing that there was that wasn't quite right with Final Fantasy VI, the Advance Edition, is working properly now. So I did a little test video, I showed some people that know the game, and they said everything looks good, sounds good. So this is the version that I'm going to be rolling with, and not the original SNES version. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, it, I did a lot of polling, I, I talked to a lot of people, I did a lot of research. This is what I've agreed upon, it's too late to turn back now. Uh, I'm happy with my choice, and that's what we're going to be rolling with here. In terms of my experience with the game, uh, just to really like clarify this once again, I've said it a few times before, but I have never played Final Fantasy VI before. I have no idea what the story entails. Thankfully, I've stayed away from spoilers pretty much like my entire YouTube career for this game, so I don't actually know the story either. This is going to be a completely fresh and blind experience. Um, I asked some people that I trust, like, is there anything super, super important that I should know as a first-time player that I really shouldn't miss? And I literally have a small list of maybe three or four things to look out for while I'm playing the game. Other than that, I'm going to be totally launching in blind, just going to totally immerse myself with the game and see how I do with this experience. So I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, it's going to be a marathon and not a sprint. I'm going to take my time with it, try and enjoy it the best I can. And I hope you enjoy going on this journey with me through Final Fantasy VI. So let's get into it and see what this game has to offer. The ancient war of the Magi, when its flames at last receded, only the charred husk of a world remained. Even the power of magic was lost. In the thousand years that followed, iron, gunpowder and steam engines took the place of magic and life slowly returned to the barren land. Yet there now stands one who would reawaken the magic of ages past and use its dread power as a means by which to conquer all the world. Could anyone truly be foolish enough to repeat that mistake?
Okay, here we go. <laughs> Straight in with Wedge. There's the city. Hard to believe an Esper's been found frozen there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. Bah. Probably just another wild goose chase. I don't know. They wouldn't have let us use her unless they were confident that the information was good. Ah, yes. Our witch. With the green hair. I hear she fried 50 of our Magitek armoured soldiers in three minutes. Kind of makes your skin crawl, don't it? Relax. With that thing on her head, she's a mindless puppet. The girl won't even breathe unless we tell her to. With approach from the east, move out. Alright, Biggs, Wedge, and a green head witch. I like it. Very Final Fantasy. Already, I'm liking the soundtrack vibes. Apparently, it's got a great soundtrack. The aesthetic is something I'm going to have to get used to. It looks cute so far, but like I say, for me, this is really like a, an era of gaming that I'm just so unfamiliar with. But I'm looking forward to, to going back and diving into it. And I feel like Final Fantasy VI is probably a good vessel for me to go back to these times. I mean, when I made the jump back from um, you know, Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy XIII, back to Final Fantasy IX, um, I was wondering, like, can I can I enjoy that transition going back a generation from my first Final Fantasy? And because seven to nine was so great, I had no problem with it. They they became some of my favorite Final Fantasies of all time. Now we're taking another leap back, but I feel like if there's any game like on on this sort of platform in this sort of era that I could love, it feels like it could be Final Fantasy VI. So, I mean, the soundtrack already sounds great. So. That's a plus. It might be old, but the, the soundtrack is, is going to shine through, I think, despite the age of the game. It's interesting seeing some of like the familiar names, like obviously Kitase, but people like uh, Nomura as well, the, in the graphic design team, all the way back in 1994. The girl takes point, and don't waste time on the riffraff. Remember what we're here for. Let's move. Okay. I would say that the, the only game that's even vaguely reminiscent of this is probably Pokemon Red. I think I played Pokemon Red like when I was like 9, something like that, 9 or 10. Other than that, oh, God. Imperial Magitek armor? Not even Nash is safe anymore. All right, straight in with the first bow. Okay, all right. Magitek. Fire beam, thunder beam, ice beam, healing force. Let's fire beam this sucker. And we've got question mark girl. Magitek, magic. she got some fire as well. Oh, look at that beam. 116. Let's see this fire. I think we're in wait mode. 72. I mean, at least, she, at least she's still celebrating the win. That's, that's a good sign. Biggs gained a level. Wedge gained a level. 96 skill. Alright. I mean, if they're Biggs and Wedge, clearly they're temporary characters, but... Let me try and have a look at this menu. So, we've got Magitek Elite, and we've got Biggs and Wedge with, like, their generic-looking avatars. Alright, I'm going to have a quick browse through what I've got here. One thing I will say is the only thing... I, I obviously did a mini-test for, like, a few minutes. Um, not Literally not even beyond this point. But the font is not something I'm happy with, and I've heard that the font isn't the greatest, but, you know, it, it's one of these weird games where, like, every single version, every single patch pretty much has, a, has like, a sacrifice you have to make for it. And I think font is something that I can, I can live with. I'll get used to it. So, battle mode is weight, battle speed, three. We'll leave it at that for now. And we'll leave all of this stuff pretty much standard for now. Toggles, active battle... 
gauge display. Why would I have that off? That's interesting. Re-equip. Select sets re-equip method to use when equipment must be changed due to change minutes. Magic order. Whoa, we have a bestiary? That's cool. Whoa, I can I can go into this as well? Fuck me, for 1994. That's impressive. Level 5 HP. It's literally got everything. It's got the steals, it's got the drops. Okay, I'm impressed. 10 out of 10 game already. Uh, let's have a look at what kind of stuff we've got for status. Strength, speed, stamina, magic, attack, defense, evasion. So I think this version, for example, is going to have the, the translation that has more of the, um, like the, the recognizable item names. I think the original SNES version with the, with the original English translation, the first one they ever did, um, like some of the stuff is a little bit more unfamiliar for people like me that have played the more modern titles. But yeah, I mean, most of this stuff is all familiar for now. So I'm not going to dive too much into menus. Let's make some progress here. The only thing I'm thinking is because of the way it looks, I'm just not used to playing games like this. I do wonder how often I'm going to get lost or I'm not going to see a pathway. I'm going to miss something. With that kind of stuff, it's bound to happen. Just, just chill. Don't worry too much about it. The Empire's got no business here. Straight in with another battle, I think. Yep. Let's use Ice Beam. Whoa, 165, okay. I mean, this magic tech is looking serious. Very well. I don't know if, like, Final Fantasy VII style, there's a button you can that toggles, like, where... De like, which places you can enter and stuff. I don't think so. I've pressed every button. So... We'll just have to, we'll have to see how it goes. In terms of missables, like I say, don't worry too much about it. This isn't meant to be like a 100% uh, sort of all achievement, platinum, get everything kind of walk through. It's just me trying to experience the game. Vanash! Two now. So the soldiers themselves are not getting involved. Ice seemed to work good last time. I don't know if they're specifically weak to ice. One way to find out. 176. Let's see the other one. Okay, well, doesn't seem so. Straight in. So action pack start. Banish a Magitek missile. Is there like a instruction for what these are? No. Okay. Bio blast, Magitek missile. These are cool. Let's do that. Oh wow. 412. Sheesh. She is special. She's got green hair. She has to be. Okay. Like I say, there's going to be a lot of me sort of coming to places where I think I can I can go somewhere, but really I can't. It's going to be a lot of this, like getting stuck in places and whatnot, but that's just the way I play. I try to explore every direction that I can that's available. Sometimes I find what I need, sometimes I don't. But I feel like it'd be a bit more obvious if I can go into somewhere or not. We've got him trapped now. So is there going to be front and back attack here? Okay, all right. Cool. Um. All right, let's do a bit of this. Not going to take no risk with the heat in here. Nice. Yeah, the, the ATB style with the weight mode and stuff seems all, all fine to me. 
seems intuitive enough. I've played my fair share of these at this stage. Obtain potion, sweet. So a few quick things to check here, I think, at this stage. So yeah, the, the HP doesn't restore itself um, afterwards, which is important to know. Okay, so I can use them in the menu, that's cool. Fine. Heading towards that first S ball ready. Defend the mines! Oh, we've got a new enemy. She does look a bit too big for the, the area. Like, she looks out of proportion. They look mammothy, so maybe they're weak to fire. I don't think this Magitek missile thing takes up MP, right? It's crazy. So Magitek is nice because we're not even using MP for it. Yeah, they're wiping everything clean so far. One thing that I do know about this game that people have said is like it's not as hand holding as like the older not the older, the other Fire Fantasies I've been playing. So there's probably going to be more times where I might not know what I'm doing or where I'm going or how to do something in particular, I don't know. But we'll see. According to our source, they unearthed the frozen Esper in a new mine shaft they were digging. This must be it. Okay, straight in. Does this give you a location? It does. Nash Mines. Right, keep an eye on that HP. Right, so I see something glowing here. And a strange light fills the air. Do you want to learn about save points? Yes. At save points, you can use tents and sleeping bags and also save the game. Okay. If your party should happen to be defeated in battle, you'll automatically restart from the last place you saved. Any gill or items you obtained will, will have to be found again, but your level and experience point total will not change. That's interesting. So you don't lose experience and level? Ooh. I wasn't expecting that. You can also save the game anywhere on the overworld map. Okay, that's what we're kind of familiar with at the moment. So let's put our first save in. One problem here is that we only have three um, save files, which is really annoying. I don't know if this is specific to the Game Boy version. It might be. Maybe the SNES had more slots. I've got, because I'm playing on emulator, I've got the, um, the save states if I want them. But I'm going to have to make sort of constant backups of my saves to make sure I've got like all of them available to me. Just in case I need to go back. Okay. Like I said, the only thing worrying me at the moment is... Hold on. I'll handle this. Stand back. Magitek power! Boom. Yeah, the only thing that's worrying me so far is... Oh, okay, random encounters. Cool. Let's have a look at Bioblast. Ah, okay, I was going to say, can I toggle between single and multiple enemy. So I don't get the option. Like I, I didn't know with magic, I thought maybe you can toggle between everything. Between everyone and singular. Let's see this in action. Took a solid three, four, and miss. Oh, I healed them. Yeah. Fine. Uh, let's hit him with some fire. Hit him with some ice. 340. Okay. I think that they should be weak to fire. Yeah, okay. They're weak to fire. 
hit him with a bit of that. Sweet. So I guess at any point you can go into your bestiary. If you're not sure, I think, would it automatically show you what everything's weak to? Is that included in there? Yeah, there you go. Weak, weak against fire absorbs poison. So I don't think you have to figure it out in battle um, to be able to see it here, I think. That's really cool. Okay, that's good to know. So at least this way you can keep a tab on what's what within the area. I like it. Okay. So yeah, as I was saying, the only thing I'm worried about is when I see these bits like off the, the central part of the screen, it's like, am I able to access them or not? That's the only thing I need to figure out. But I think more often than not, the answer is no. And you just have to, to keep going. We're not handing over the Esper. Ymir, get them. Yeah, it's going to be some usual pronunciation shenanigans. Biggs, hold it. This thing's a... They must have trained it to guard the mines. What are you talking about? You know what this is? Ever heard of a lightning whelk? It's a monster that absorbs lightning. And stores the energy in its shell. Right. So whatever you do, don't attack the shell. Got it. Okay, at least we've got some sort of thing here. Um, let's check the missile. Solid 512 damage there. I do love a wait mode, man. Especially like when the game game gets like old school like this. Aha. Uh -huh. Whatever you do, don't attack the shell. I mean, we haven't used lightning though, so it has it hasn't stored anything in the shell, surely. Let's just see what happens anyway. Trial and error sometimes. Mega Volt. So even if you haven't attacked it with lightning, it can still do that to you, so that's good to know. Healing force. Since these aren't using um, these aren't using MP, it seems pretty easy to heal at the moment. So I don't need to do anything crazy here. Yeah, look at that healing force. It's, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, ah. So. In this situation, do I literally just wait? Am I able to do that? Can I, can I like, skip a turn? Is there a skip turn thing? I think so. Hmm. Okay. I guess maybe... Oh, wait, no, it's back. Okay, I mean, it makes the battle more dynamic, for sure. I guess you've got to be careful to, to time it carefully so you don't hit it. Like, just after. Did I get it? I think so. <laughs> Alright. Obtain high potion. Cool. Let's roll. Yeah, so being able to heal without MP is just it's brilliant. So these are all light work at this stage. I do wonder how difficult Fire Fantasy VI is going to get. I feel like there's going to be a likelihood of, like, encountering battles where... Hmm. See, look, I got stuck. Well, I feel like I'm stuck. 
Uh, let's just fire off. Everything's weak to fire so far, almost. Yeah, okay. So I feel like I got stuck already. There you go. <laughs> right, is this the Esper? So, this is the Frozen Esper? Are we going to fight each Esper that we find? Yes, we are. Okay, here we go. This thing's giving me the creeps. Something's not right. The soundtrack already really showing promise here. The frozen creature begins emitting an, an eerie light. Where's that light coming from? Wah! Oh. What, what was that? Wedge? Wedge, where are you? H hey! What's going on? Well, that ain't good. Game over. Oh, okay. I'm back already. Well, that was interesting. Where am I? Old man. My, my. And I just removed the crown. The soundtrack sounds really nice so far. I'm just going to listen to it for a sec. My head hurts. Easy there. This is a slave crown. The others were using it to control you. It was robbing you of your thoughts, making it so you do whatever they told you. I can't remember a thing. Don't worry. It'll all come back to you. In time, that is. A mysterious young woman, born with the gift of magic, and enslaved by the Gestalian Empire. Terra, there we go! First nameable protagonist in the game. Let's go. Is it Terra or Terra? My name is Terra. Impressive. I've never heard of anyone recovering so fast. You must be made of tougher stuff than most. Okay, I was wondering if that guy was going to be a nameable protagonist. Not yet. Open up. We're here for the Magitek armor pilot. Open this door right now and hand over that girl. She is an agent of the Empire. Empire? Magitek armor? There's no time to explain. You need to get out of here. These fools aren't going to listen to reason. This way, quickly. All right, straight out. The Empire is on the hunt for terror. Up there. Okay, are we into mines again? Back into the Nash mines, alright. 
that breath sound that you hear now and then, that freaked me out the first time I heard it. So like here, I don't know if there's secret stuff. I bet there's a lot of bits where like you go off screen, like you're invisible and there's something to get there. But now she's on her own and she doesn't have her um, thingy anymore. What do you call it? Magitek armor anymore. So that Magitek armor is super powerful. You see? So now we're in a lot more danger. We've got to be very careful here. Let's see how much the attack does, just so we know. 30. Okay. Gained a level, 54 gil. Yeah, you're going to have to level up fast, girl. Magitek Elite. Right. Go into another ban. I'll wait till I get to below like 30 HP or so before I do anything. Terror. It's a name I know well from uh, from Final Fantasy IX. I think I've heard Terra's theme before. It's meant to be one of the greats. Wrench. Oh, missed. Nice. Okay, so that, I guess I don't have to use magic that much. So I can save. So I've got a quick save as well. I don't know if it overwrites. I want to see what quick save does. Oh shit, I accidentally quit, but yeah, there you go. At least we can get back in very quickly. That's good to know. Alright, let's keep rolling. Again, I feel like surely stuff that I can obtain is quite is more clearly signposted, especially if it's important. Preemptive strike, get straight in with that. I feel like I want to save my MP for now. She can one-hit KO with attack, so we might as well just save the MP for now. Yeah, I can go up through there. Yeah, you see, this is what I mean. So yeah, I can, I do need to explore a little bit here. And we're just always encountering the same thing at the moment. That's one thing I'm curious about with these older, like now we're starting to get to seriously old Fire Fantasy titles. Stuff like enemy variety, I wonder how how much of it there's going to be compared to some other ones. Okay, first chest of the game. Sleeping bag. Okay. One thing I want to see is... Can we use it like this? Oh, right. Okay. Good to know. Wait. Oh, MP cost 5. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of potential things to miss here, I think. I wonder if there's an escape thing. Like, can you get out of it? Row. No, I don't think so. Since we're on wait mode, I just want to... The row mechanic is something that, once I got to the older Final Fantasies, it took me a little while to adjust to. I do wonder if you'll be able to escape eventually, though, from battles. Phoenix down, first one. Good. I have no one to use it on, though, yet. I do wonder how easy it's going to be to restore MP as well. Right, I think I've got everything. <laughs> Do 
just amazing how different it is. It really is. Don't throw the wrench. There we go. Clean run. Got another level. Up to six. Good stuff. There she is. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's not what I thought was going to happen. Kefka, my sweet little magic user. Wee hee hee. With this slave crown, you'll be all mine. Soldier 3. Ooh, 666. Six, six. Wee hee hee. Good, good. Burn them all to a crisp. Gestal, soldiers of the Empire, we stand at the dawn of a new age. The lost power of magic has returned to us. We are the chosen ones. The time has come for us to claim our rightful dominion over the world. Nothing shall stand in our way. Hurrah! Long live Emperor Gestal. Okay. There we go. Starting to see the antagonistic side of the cast as well. Took you long enough. Busy with all the robbing and plundering, I assume. Okay. A treasure hunter and trail-worn traveller, searching the world over for relics of the past. Alright, second character, Locke. Cool. I prefer the term treasure hunting. Ha! Semantic nonsense. There's a huge difference. <laughs> anyway, is there something you need me to do? There is indeed. I met the girl. You don't mean... The city guard is pursuing her as we speak. This city has the strength to stand up to the Empire, but it won't use it. The people are just too stubbornly independent to join an underground resistance group like the Returners. I tried to explain that the Empire was controlling the girl, but they wouldn't even listen. Alright, so, you want me to get her out of Nash? That would be the idea. Make your way to Figaro for the time being. Oh wow. Straight in. We now have a party of two. Now we've got a... Oh, no you don't. Wonderful. 
There's a whole bunch of them. Koopo. Yeah, Moogles! It's nice I made an appearance so early. Moogles. Are you saying you want to help? <laughs> Koopo! Alright. Oh shit, we have a Moogle in the party, like straight up. Use us to protect Terra from the guards. Would you like an explanation? Sure. You'll fight using three different groups. Press select to switch between them. Defeat the leader of the guards before his men reach Terra, or the battle's lost. Um, okay, I'll try. Adventurer, level 8. Moglin, Mogret, and Moggy. Good old Moogles. Nice. Right. Uh. Okay. Lock can steal. Let's let's throw in a steal. And Moggies are just going to attack here. Whoa. Okay, well that was serious. I'll just deal with Locke for now. I don't know how it works. They want me to... I guess I've got to kind of block off everywhere or something. Is that how it works? We'll have to see. Surely it can't be that difficult. I'll continue with doing what I've been doing so far, which is just... ...stealing and then attacking with the rest of them. But this guy just hitting us with a snowstorm, which is doing pretty big damage. I think I'll heal in the menu just to be safe. Oh, well, okay, that was quick. Four Moogles this time. Oh, okay, we've got the whole squad here. Holy shit. Mog, Mog Lulu, Mogan, Mogwell. <laughs> so we just got Mog, like that, is that like the leader of the... Is that the leader of the Moogles? Right. So try and sort this out from all fronts. Mogzy, Mogwin, Mogmog, and Cosmog. <laughs> Cosmog. I mean, visually already, it's, it, there's like a... There's like a charm to it, there's like a... I don't know, it's nice. Like when you see Snowstorm and stuff, even though it's very basic, I don't know, I quite like it actually. I didn't think I, I would to that degree, but... It's cool. I'm going to switch to the other team and see what's going on. I'm not going to take any risks here. Just try and keep people alive. I couldn't tell if I caught them or if that was a random encounter. Megalodoth. It just comes in with snowstorm straight away, man. Couldn't steal. I don't know how good the percentage are, percentages are. I think the first deal that Locke tried, it worked, so... Alright, here we go. Alright, the music's changed a little bit here. 
Okay. Dance. Twilight Requiem. Okay. Will of the Wisp. Oh! Wow. Okay, alright. Little Moggies are killing it. Oh, okay, that was 104. Right, these guys are not playing around. Nice. Wow. Right, I think we've got the job done. Thanks, Moogles. We're in your debt. Damn, son. Lock got that thief speed. This switch ought to... Hey, you back with us now? You saved me? Save your thanks for the Moogles. Ugh, I can't remember a thing. It's like my mind's trapped in a fog. You lost your memory? A man said it would come back eventually. So, you've got amnesia. Don't worry, I won't leave your side until your memory returns. I'm not going to up and abandon someone just because they lost their memory. I'll keep you safe, I promise. How noble. <laughs> that was funny. Right, I'm in control again. Right. Let's speak to someone. This is a school for the beginning adventurer. Despite all of our recent advances in technology, the outside world remains full of monsters we know little about. Here, we provide advice to travelers brave enough to face as many dangers. Okay, I'm good with that. I'd like to get some advice. I am but a fledgling traveller. Travel through some serious space and time to, to get to Final Fantasy VI, but still. This is water from a recovery spring. It will restore your HP and MP. Such springs are located all throughout the world, so always be on the lookout. That's good to know. There you go. Okay. So yeah, I think a lot of the stuff that you figure out in this game is going to be from like exploring and talking to people and stuff. It's not going to be as sort of everything's going to be tutorials as much as I'm used to from the more modern titles, I think. If you set the battle mode to wait in the config menu, you can take all the time you want to select spells or items in battle without having to worry about being attacked. You might find this room more useful after you've gained some experience out in the world. A lot of the things you'll hear in here might not make much sense until you've gotten your feet wet. That's fair. Let's enter some rooms. Advanced battle tactics. Okay, this is an interesting way of giving people tutorials about the game. So, chest. Ocean. Just want to see if there's any other... There's this gold sort of hot thing. No? Okay. Something to note about the Reflect spell. Reflect doesn't block spells that have already been reflected once. Yep. You can use this to your advantage. Cast Reflect on ally, then cast attack spells on that same person to bounce them at an enemy. Get it? So this is the sort of thing where, like, if I was playing through... If I was new to Fire Fantasy, I'd be jotting the shit down. Because, I mean, imagine, like, back in 94, 
you don't got the guides and shit, man. It's like, with this stuff, you either remember it or you don't. So you have to probably keep revisiting and refreshing your memory and, and that kind of thing. So if there's anything new that I see here that I'm not familiar with from the Five Fantasies I've played or that I've forgotten, then it'd be, it'd be good to know. Bushido techniques take time to master. New ones will be learned over time. So literally every person got something to say. Allow me to explain a few of the specialized battle commands. See, like runic is not something I'm very familiar with. Absorbs magic and turns it into MP. That's cool. Runic remains active until a spell is absorbed or another battle command is given. Trance. Boost attack and magic. The duration increases as more battles are fought. Dance and Rage. Once selected, these commands are used continuously until the end of battle. So like those ones are stuff that I'm not familiar with from what I've been playing. Re-Raise automatically revives a character KO'd. Regen gradually restores HP. Undead creatures such as ghosts are damaged by creature spells and items. That's something I forget from time to time. I get too caught up in the rhythm of just attacking things as normal. So I see a skeleton and I'll just physically attack it. Desperate times can bring out strength you never knew you had. Critically wounded characters may occasionally perform powerful hidden techniques when you select attack. That's interesting as well. Okay. So it looks like there's some serious depth to the, the gameplay here. So let's see what stace effects we've got in this one. So like invisibility again. I mean, physical attacks will miss you, but spells will always strike true. You revert to normal if hit by magic. Imp. Prevents you from using special skills and magic. Zombie. Zombie attacks friend and foe alike. Ah, okay, so it's different. Attack friend and foe alike. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it still has the usual effect of you can't use healing spells to help. But it has like a double effect of almost, it's like confuse and zombie. That I would know of from like Five Fantasy X, I think. Hmm. If your skin is ashen, your HP is zero, and you're still moving, there's a good chance you're a zombie. <laughs> Sleep and confusion. These states elements are cancelled when a character is attacked. Yep. Okay, fine. Image status creates illusionary images of a character, making it difficult for enemies to hit the character. Image status. Yeah, there's some stuff that I'm going to have to... Either that I'm probably never going to use, or that I'm going to have to really learn. Uh, Fire, Ice and Lightning, they always ignore water. Always ignore water. They're represented by spells Fire, Blizzard and Thunder, respectively. The Reflect spell remains active for only a short time and will not reflect lore magic. Okay. I think that's everybody here. Alright, cool. I'm probably going to forget most of these by the time I fight anyway, but... Maybe by reading them out, I'll kind of commit them to some... longer-term storage of memory. Battle tactics. Ah, okay. Represented by different colors. So this is something I've got to pay attention to. So like green, if I saw that without this tutorial, I'd, I'd assume I was poisoned. Yeesh. Remembering that is going to be tough for me, I think. I need to run through that a few times. <laughs> so I guess if you have multiple statuses, you're going to like alternate between different colors or something? Hmm. Alright. Interesting. The white numbers that appear during battle are damage points, green numbers are recovery points, yep. That's like the basics of the basics, yeah? Damage received by characters in the back row is halved, but so is the attack power of those characters, so yep, okay. You can run from most battles, ah, there you go, you see, that's what I need to know, that's good. So like, if I'm exploring around and I get into too many battles, I can definitely do that, that's good. I tried each button individually, but I forgot. I think there's another... I think it's like Final Fantasy VII, maybe, or like one of the other ones where it's the same thing to run away. Turn meters are located in the lower right corner. Yeah, okay. Press select to skip to the next character without entering a command. 
to target all enemies. So I think I've tried this a few times, but it didn't work, so I think only certain spells were able to do it. Row moves the character to the front row to back and vice versa. Defends, defend cuts receive damage in half and last turn next character's turn. Okay. So most of it is stuff that we already knew. Damage is more severe when enemies have you surrounded, especially if your back is to the one attacking. Let's get this chest as well. Sleeping bag. Alright, I think I'm done here. Alrighty, this is one final room. Field science. Okay, I'll take a look at this room and then toss a save in. Monster in a box. Aho! Steel. Steel potion. Nice. That was a bit cheeky, game. Be careful. Sometimes monsters lurk inside a treasure chest. Bit late for that, son. Potions may taste funny, but they also heal injury. If you're hurt, drink one to restore some HP. Staying at an inn will completely heal your entire party. Have you heard about relics? I have not. Relics can grant you a variety of abilities. For example, sprint shoes double your walking speed. A gauntlet lets you hold a weapon with both, ha with both hands to increase damage. The Knight's Code makes you shield others in combat. Dragoon boots, allow you to perform Dragoon boots allow you to perform jump attacks. A person can equip up to two relics at the same time. Okay, that's good to know. Valuables are sometimes hidden in pots such as this one. Yeah, I actually went for that before. Ether. Sweet. Sweet. Save point. Save points. We can use 10 sleep bears. Let's save the game. Your party should happen to be defeated in battle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when selecting armor or weapons in a shop, symbols will appear next to the characters that can equip them. An upward pointing triangle indicates an increase in attack or defense power. Okay. Let me teach you how to ride a chocobo. Yes, please. Press the A button or to go forward. Steer by pressing. Okay. Careful. The bird will return to its pen as soon as you leave the saddle. Alright. Now the tutorials are out of the way. I'm going to get out there. So... We're going to save over this one. So basically, I'm going to have like one save per session, mostly, I would say, or maybe two. Alright, let's go. So I can restore with that, and get going. Okay, everything is looking good so far, man. I'm enjoying it. The soundtrack, the writing seems pretty good. I mean, it doesn't... It's weird for some reason because you're playing a game from 1994. You feel like the writing's going to be worse because, like, you feel like games had less, there were less sort of cinematic, narratively driven games back then compared to what there was later on. But there's no reason really why the writing should be any worse in this era, in this era than it is in modern times. But I think that's just some weird, like, you know, bias that you have from generally getting into narrative games from like the more modern era. But the writing seems fine to me so far. It doesn't seem old. Hmm. Is that... Hey! <laughs> it's not safe here. We'd better hightail it south to Figaro. Okay, they're definitely... Can I still not give it a go? Fine. I tail it. Alright, okay, world map for the first time. I can save where I want. Beautiful. 